Hey friends, this is David, your traveling tutor. I'm coming to you with a brand new video. It's called Baha'i Pagasa. It's an NGO run by University of St. LaSalle and it helps troubled youth become better people. So I want to show you that center, give you a tour of this amazing facility that helps troubled youth. If you like this video, please hit subscribe hit that like button to help me get to 10,000 subscribers. So let's get started. All right, my friends, today we are here with Brother Dan Fenton. Brother Dan, the program that we're going to be taking a look at today is Baha'i Pagasa Youth Center. And it's a uh, program within the University of St. LaSalle. It's a program for children in conflict with the law. These are all minors. Well, they're minors until they outgrow that but some of them are still with us okay. these are people who while they were minors uh, were charged with some offense of the law or in some cases if they were too young they were just deemed very high risk of getting in more trouble mm -hmm. and the courts decided they need to be out of their neighborhood for a while because their safety was at stake and things like that okay so maybe a comparison would be like what they call juvie in the u.s yeah juvenile yeah. detention very much like that okay since i don't think there's any juvenile facilities much like us you know for juvie prior to this place being built in 2001 all the kids were being held in adult jail and they were in the cells with adults in many cases. And that so, is a problem. Yeah. So <laughs> it was, uh, and so when we opened this place and started taking residence in 2002, the first ones all came from jails. And mm -hmm. so we Good. took in a bunch from jails. Fantastic. And it was very challenging work because they were used to being in jail and all with all the mm -hmm. negative aspects. Of, Acted like adults yeah, and adult things. What came and... with that? <laughs> so since then, of course, there's been some uh, legislation in the Philippines and uh, now juveniles who are under 18 are tried or they try very much to work around the jail system and get them into uh, facilities like this if they have to mm -hmm. which uh, are now generally called Baha'i Pegasus the government calls all of these okay uh, Baha'i is Tagalog for house it's not Balai Balai right. would be, would be in. Longo, yeah okay Baha'i Pegasa because the idea was it would be three of these Lasallian ones mm -hmm. uh, uh, with the University of St. LaSalle, one in Luzon, one in uh, the Visayas here, and then one in Mindanao. Okay, Southern. We don't have the one in Mindanao yet, but All that's right. how the other two are going. So those are, we're private NGOs. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the Baipagasas you'll hear about are city run or government run or done within a province, so they're a little okay. bit different. You've been here a long time then. I've been here about eight years, living here. I was involved with it 10 years before that. I would come every summer as a volunteer. Okay. Have you seen changes in the youth, you know, when they come in versus when they leave, whether they age out when they turn 18 or they yeah. do their time? Oh yeah, we see some big changes. Mm -hmm. uh, and some kids have been here longer than uh, uh, one resident we recently left here after six years. Uh, and that's because his trial took that long. Uh, the courts can move very slowly here because okay. uh, there's lots of delays, uh, judges retire, attorneys leave, remove, and it's almost like starting over. Uh, and so it's going to be a real, a real problem. Today, as we go into the youth center, what will we be looking at? Is uh, basically, you see the living area of the kids. You'll okay. see we have some spaces for classes. Today's sort of a down day because the local public school uh, hasn't quite geared up yet. It mm -hmm. will be soon. Yeah. Uh, and so most of our kids don't have any homework to do yet. So they're probably watching TV. Okay. Or... When that gets going, then during the daytime. Uh, some of our kids will be over at the school, uh, mm -hmm. the public school, okay. if they have uh, court clearance. And the ones that don't have court <laughs> clearance yet will be doing modular uh, educational. So yeah. it's uh, very individualized. Uh, uh -huh. you know, somebody said, uh, describe your program to me. I said, well, we have 28 <laughs> kids, so we have 28 programs. You know? So friends, yeah, we're uh, we're here with Brother Daniel and we're gonna go inside, take a look. Because they're minors, I'm not gonna show faces um, of these individuals, but uh, yeah, we're gonna go inside, take a look at this amazing program that's run by the University of St. LaSalle. All right, so we're heading inside. And right over here, we have our security guard. Hey, bro. And this is our lobby just inside, so yeah. when people come here. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is the first thing. It's been recently been fixed up a little. Mm -hmm. uh, we're 20 years old, and so uh, 20 years of wear and tear, <laughs> teenage boys. And, Sometimes it needs a, a facelift. 
Yeah. So, Makeover. So we're doing it in stages. We had the lobby, and then the the main idea was to start with the residents of the, the kids. Yeah. And Good. so we fixed that up. The next thing project is going to be the kitchen, mm -hmm. which is badly needed. But uh, in the next few years, we plan on sort of cycling through the whole. Cycle. Okay. Do you do you find that there's enough funding? The university supplies us with salaries, mm -hmm. um, and the the guard service. And, and that sort of thing, and they uh, assist us in fundraising. Okay. Uh, and then we have uh, a grant from the province that we apply for every mm -hmm. year. From Legos. Yeah, and that takes some paperwork. And okay. then we also uh, have established a way of billing the different uh, cities, or the LGUs, for who send us kits. Okay. And we say we're asking you to help us with the. Food and you know clothing Just expenses. Kick in a little not bit. Not everything, yeah. Okay. But so, because every city has a budget for this. Okay. And not every city is doing something with it, you mm -hmm. know. There. Mm -hmm. So. So t so tap into it if it you yeah, can. Yeah. And because your choice is you can build one of these yourself in your own city and staff it, and which is not too attractive <laughs> if your budget is tight. <laughs> or you can send them here, and we will we will do our best. Uh, but and you gotta help a little. Yeah, so. got it. Yeah, that makes sense. That's a good plan. Oh wow, this is very nice. Yeah. So the yeah. this thing is uh, a group of uh, Carmelite nuns visited this place when it first opened, and they said, "I think this is a convent," you know, <laughs> <laughs> because it's designed like like one sort of. This would be the cloister. You know, okay. Exactly. The idea of this arrangement is that, yeah, for instance, in the evening after dinner. We, the doors get closed and secured, mm -hmm. but kids can still be outside. Yeah. Uh, I've been in a lot of centers, I've visited some, and everyone's cooped up in a building. And it gets very uncomfortable and intense. crazy. Yeah, sure. Of course. Wow, this is really nice. I so, never expected a, a nice big courtyard in the center of the center. <laughs> that's right. And so this is uh, an area where the kids have games. They also come out here and sit. When volunteers come, they often have activities out here. Do they play basketball? Or? Oh, every day. <laughs> this section is real really is to secure the office areas. That makes sense. Nothing goes missing. Mm -hmm. It's very quiet. There are 28, well, with the exception of the floor that they're at school today, there's 28 residents. 28 residents, okay. We are trying to hold it at about 30. Mm -hmm. If we go above 30 for any length of time, we have to get another social worker. As it is, we have to have two. Okay. And so okay. we, by going over, that means another salary. So we're holding, unless we were certain that we could yeah, get something. Yeah. Okay, this is our library. Uh huh. And all these books on the table just came in yesterday. Wow. And so we're. we're nice donation. We, I know, we a librarian came here one summer. So this this room was full of old books that had been donated when the place first opened. Yeah. And most of them were not the kinds of things kids would read. They weren't very good. <laughs> but the library had just given us everything they were throwing away. Yeah, the leftovers, basically. She said, what do you want me to do this summer? I'm a volunteer. And I said, can you help us with this library? I said, you're a librarian. I know it's your work. Maybe wow. you want to get away from it. She said, sure. So she spent the first day in here and she came up to me and she said, well, first you need a dumpster. <laughs> and I said, is that bad? She said, yeah. And I said, okay. So we started taking books and most of them we actually found other people had uses for, you know, the various okay. places. But then the shelves were, you know, half empty. Yeah. She said, don't worry, I will send books. And so since then, she has been sending books several times a year. Oh my goodness, look at this, friends. All kinds of books here. Some of the kids can read English, others cannot, but they always end up in here looking around the, the, the photos, you know, just exploring things. So, yeah. Oh, we have Looks like there's some good books that came in. Oh, it's wonderful. I, I was so excited yesterday when these arrived. <laughs> they arrived with mouse soup. Woo! Yeah. Freaky fried. Okay. And fresh. Whoever donated these, good job. Yes. That's awesome. Miss, Miss, Miss <laughs> Margaret. She uh, lives in uh, the Bay Area of California. Oh, so. Okay. So, and she's been here as a volunteer three times. Oh, and ah. This is our computer room. It's, it's in a state of being repaired and upgraded now. Mm -hmm. so, 
Um, but we made good use of it the last two years with online classes. And uh, okay. that must have been a challenge for online classes. I know teachers struggled with technology and it was it was difficult. teaching remote. And our local public school did not really do online classes. They just did the modules. Sent out modules. Yeah. And I, I was working with kids on modules in math and science, especially mm -hmm. that was my teaching area. But it was very challenging sometimes to to make sense of these modules. And I thought mm -hmm. I don't know how kids are doing it. And, and but, I'm very glad they're moving back into face-to-face -face yes, classes. Yes, definitely. And definitely. hopefully we'll be able to get the core clearances for uh, more and more of our kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Wow, look at this, friends. How nice is this courtyard? We have a lot of cats. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want a cat, just say Oh, no. I'm a dog person. We have lots of dogs, too. <laughs> These cats keep the place uh, free of mice, though. They do. That's the free one. of mice, free of snakes. <laughs> um, this is a uh, sort of a multi-use classroom. Okay. That, uh, it was set up because we had volunteers here yesterday running programs. All right. Another cat over there. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, we started with like two and then somehow we got back in the middle. And then these are our dogs. Uh, lots and lots of them. And, uh, and the black one, the little black one, Zoku, was brought by one of the uh, residents. <laughs> okay. Who didn't want to leave his home, you know, without right. his dog. So, oh, of course. Yeah, these are puppies in there. Oh. <laughs> uh, just, I think yesterday. Oh right? my goodness. Cute. Oh. They all belong to, hey, there she is. Haven for the youth and a haven for the dogs. Hold on. Yeah, I know a lot of dogs take sanctuary here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Hi. Oh, no, yes. Hello. She's very nice. Oh, hi. Hello. This is actually where I live here. This is my okay. residence. Okay. All That's right. why it's padlocked because it's a door that goes to the outside and we don't want anyone of course. taking an unauthorized field trip. Yeah. So I tell people when they, we have groups visiting as we go by, I say, behind this locked gate is the most dangerous resident in Baha'i Progress. And they say, oh my God, you're doing that. I said, that would be me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Giovanni's our big dog. He was our first dog. And... Ooh, 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 ooh. Ooh, 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 ooh. Hi. Oh, hello. Dogs are You're so uh, friendly. He probably smells time, my dog. A long time we didn't have any dogs here. Our Hi. Family, but hello. Once we started, uh, it was remarkable. You see kids who are having a bad day, and then you see them with the dog. You yeah. Know? yeah. I know. So they do uh -huh. quite They're... a bit of good here. Yeah. Okay. This is, uh, that's actually my office table. I'm okay. cataloging books for the mm -hmm. library. Mm -hmm. yep. And uh, we have another kid who uses that desk. He's at school right now. Okay. But he works, uh, he was elected by his fellow residents to be religious coordinator. He sets up all the prayer services. Okay, good. I was trying to set it up so we could give away cats and dogs for any visitors here. <laughs> <laughs> we get a cat or a dog. Uh, this room, uh, some exercise machines okay. and they do haircuts. Uh -huh. One of our residents is a very good barber. So we found out he was as good as the barber in town. So we pay him now and we put the money in an envelope for him. Okay. And so when he leaves, he's going to walk out with a, a sum of cash we can use. That's a nice area. Look at that. Okay, so this is a typical bedroom for the uh, for the youth. One, two, three, four, five, six. But it doesn't look like they're all being used, so. Hey, bro. <laughs> What's your name? My name is Joke Inosanto Bro. Do you like working here with the youth? Yes, we do. Uh-huh. Do you see that the youth center helps them change their lives and helps them become better, yes, better people? Okay, we're there. Thank you. Okay, so coming out of the common area, wow, look again, just a, a nice, open, wonderful feeling. Yeah, baby. I said to uh Oh, a woman asked me once, she says, how do you keep them from running away? And I said, <laughs> they don't I said what we do is we disguise the place like a resort. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if the residents did leave, wow, they would not have it so nice, would yeah, they? that's true. This is quite a wonderful place. So most of them are very happy. In fact, a lot, uh, there's quite a few residents here who could have gone home some time ago, but have opted to stay here because 
of the situation where they were living, uh, maybe as far into the hills, the mountains, they can't get to school easily. Right. Uh, so they, want so to they see the there's opportunities here. And they explain that to their families, and often the families are very supportive too, saying, yeah. okay, stay there and, you know. Brother Dan, have you done any type of recidivism studies to see? That's what we're looking at. Um, we've had about 200 residents. So okay. Mm -hmm. And so we know we've counted about 10 to 12 who have gone back to uh, jail in some way. Okay. But we haven't heard of many other than that. And so 10 out of 200 is a very, low. very low. And compared to the U.S., recidivism rates ranges from 30 to 60%. Yeah. So that's quite low. And, and Yeah, it's not official yet, but to do that, I've been telling the uh, staff, I'm not the director here, I just uh, a helper. Yeah. Uh, but I've been saying, we really need to get it down so we have the statistic, you know, because we Some can data. use that for funding and support. Yeah, so. definitely, because, you know, um, in the U.S., getting the recidivism rate down, that's why a lot of jails have the GED program, right. uh, similar, the ALS program. They, they feel like uh, education gives inmates better opportunities. I'm sure it's the same way here in the Philippines. But when you need a degree to work at McDonald's, sometimes you're like, well, is the degree, is it worth it? But I know that there's probably a, a psychological component to getting that high school diploma, getting that college diploma, which will lead to better uh, I think so, yeah. And uh, with our residents, we try and have to make sure there's a plan in place when they leave here. How do they continue their education? And it may be after high school it's going to be a vocational training mm -hmm. in some skill area and some of them go to college you know that's an yeah. amazing thing because they weren't really considering that at first well yeah a social support network is huge yeah uh, a lot of inmates in the u.s don't have that they get out they end up going back to the same old same old this is the where kids look to see their uh, jobs during the weeks so ah. there's a schedule there's jobs. This is one of the things the kids work for. The families can visit them on the weekend, mm -hmm. on Sundays. But there's, we also have as an incentive, if your behavior is good, we will actually take you to visit your your home so you can see the neighborhood and the, oh, all wow. the which is a big attraction. Mm -hmm. And if they are unqualified, you say, okay, hey, try again next month. You know, mm -hmm. we're going to keep working on this. <laughs> so these are all the jobs uh, who keeps what parts of the area clean. Okay. This is the De La Salle brothers who are in the community in Bacola. I'm a member of the community, oh, okay. but I live here. The rest of them live at the house near the college. And so about once a week, I go down there and remind them I'm still alive. <laughs> I am still here. This is our kitchen. This is the area that's going to be redone. Mm -hmm. And this room here... I'm going to go in. Oh, sure. This room here is going to be turned into a uh, practice bakery. Oh! So we've had the architects show us what it's going to look like. And so we have three staff members who are bakers. Who have, you know, they've done that for one time in their life. Yeah. And so they're excited about building this as an example. How do you start your bakery business? So that's what we're going to do. Start oh, okay. A bakery. Okay, okay. Four times a day. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, and oh, afternoon. Okay. So this is where everybody eats. I'm sure it's a busy place when <laughs> during those times. It's a busy place. <laughs> and meals are fast when I they're, go through. They're young men, so. Yeah. When I came here, I just asked them, what are you doing Christmas? What is it turned out most of the staff is at home with the families? Mm -hmm. I said, well, yeah, we have to do something. So now yeah. I've been cooking Christmas dinner now for the last eight years. And then I thought, well, I missed Thanksgiving, you know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, so we do Thanksgiving here. Uh, you do. We, we, Thanksgiving is not common in the Philippines. No, it's it isn't. But we've all. established it here. Oh, okay. It's just to keep me happy. And so, uh, I've been, are there turkeys involved? Well, or? we actually get usually one a year from a donor who says, oh, okay. well, but it's not enough to feed the group. <laughs> okay. So we usually throw in a goat, a pig. <laughs> so it's like, got to supplement it a little bit. Uh, yeah. Let's back that up. That's good. Drag, well, that can drag on, you know. And so yeah. if if a kid stays in a place like that and sees no change. Day after day after day, 
that's when you have problems. That's yeah. when they start to despair. So you have to have all kinds of little mileposts, you know, oh, look, you've achieved this. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, we're gonna have a celebration this weekend. Mm -hmm. I used to ask them on the Filipino holiday, National Heroes Day, what do you do? They would look at me like, I don't know, you don't, people don't go to work. And I said, <laughs> I know, but, but what do you, so we come up with things, uh -huh. you know, to acknowledge those holidays. We need that. Oh, this man here, this is Sir Ariel. He is our agriculturist. Okay. And so he's a graduate of the last South School up in Araneta. Yes, brother. And uh, so he came here and he manages our farm. Okay. And uh, really nice to meet you, bro. Nice to meet you. Yeah. And he was in our emergency driver this morning because our regular driver didn't show up and we had all these kids that needed to get to school. We, we are the partners of emergency. That's kind of what I gathered, you know. There's... <laughs> I don't drive here. <laughs> Even there's a lot of emergencies we are. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you, you have Even to. Times. I always tell people. Uh, they were looking for this place a while back and yeah some people were expressing some interest and i said well think carefully because you will never have a real life to yourself <laughs> that job it means you may be home it may be christmas eve but if something goes wrong here you know you're gonna get a call you're, you're gonna get a call to come you down. Have to show up. can i add your background and but it is Mm -hmm. in but you're not a resident here. Mm -hmm. No. Okay. So I'm I can. Staff. Your staff. Yeah. Okay. So can you tell me about this place? Or just what do you think of it? You can help for the rehabilitation. This is the program is good for the kids. Even they have seen in the outside, but you can do much better. And after they go, out, you can improve themselves. They Not can, only themselves, yes. but eventually they're going to go to a community, community back and they place. will improve the community yes. and their future family. Yeah. So all of that is kind of grows and expands. Uh, that's why our residents now we are they're taking almost criminology. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a very popular that's major. <laughs> you ask them, they say, well, I think I know something about it. Yeah. <laughs> a good background in criminology. Everybody, I think, goes into a job thinking that they want to make a difference. Oh. But at this particular center, it mm. seems like you can really make an impact oh. on the youth of the future, I guess. Yeah. You know? <laughs> oh, your chapel. How lovely. Yeah, Brother Gus uh, was the brother who built this place. Mm -hmm. he, had, uh, he was the president of the university. We, the kids are in here about 545 in the morning. Yeah. That's when I have to Ooh. be up to meet them. Okay. There, so. <laughs> and they have a short prayer. All right. It's mindfulness. And then they pray the Angelus. But we then have another prayer here for everyone before lunch. And it's usually uh, basic a gospel reading, you know, and some mm -hmm. intentions. And so they get to bring up uh, things in their life that are concerning them and their prayer intentions. And, and then we do uh, a little mindfulness and uh, prayer and after dinner. So we sort of book in the day. I think. Okay. And, uh, and then mass on Sunday. Or okay. Something. So this is your infirmary room, or it's labeled clinic up there. But... Yeah, that's right. And so there. Uh, there used to be a doctor that would come here regularly. Okay. Once again, that's stopped during the pandemic. And that's the trick is how to get things started up. Yeah. Right so if there's any friends, any doctors out there that want to volunteer, are you in need sure, of? Sure. <laughs> you can put them to work? We always welcome. <laughs> and then this is another business enterprise of ours. This I is see a lot of water in there. Our water refilling station. Okay. And so the kids know how to operate all the equipment here. That's a big, too big. And we have a deep well on the site. It's ah. very good quality water. Really? We, uh, then they run it through the system. They still purify it, they purify even it. after it comes out of the well? Yeah. Okay, yeah, look at and that. So, and we have it tested every couple of weeks. Uh, uh, you know, by a testing agency in town, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. make sure it's good. And we sell, now we're selling it primarily to a captive audience at the university. So. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of this goes to the USLS. Most of it goes to Okay, USLS. all right. But then it's for us too, which is good, maybe, yeah. because we get good quality water. Good quality water, wow. This is Sir David. Hi. Who's Hi, Mr. David. 
David. And How are you? Are you? Just David. I am Cheney, the one Cheney? that you emailed me. Oh, okay, all right. Very nice to meet you. Yeah. yeah. Nice to meet you too. <laughs> that is Mr. Rodell. Yeah, you met him earlier. Yeah, we met earlier. Oh, you met earlier. So friends, we're gonna head out to the piggery. Yeah. And that is, you were saying this is one of the livelihoods of the, the residents here. The idea is so when they leave, they'll have the knowledge to. Uh -huh. They want to start something like this at their own home. A business or yeah. to be enterprising or an entrepreneur. Yeah. Now through that gate is already into uh, agribusness, eco park, eco that way. Okay. So when we get back to a normal schedule, Often swimming is something the kids will do on, oh, yeah. on the weekend. So we just walk there. There's the egg department. <laughs> ah. So we're producing eggs. Yeah, and this the eat log. Oh, yeah. This month we will replace new, new layers. Uh -huh. Now, do the, these uh, egg layers ever become chokes? Yeah. The piglets. Uh huh. Hi, piggies. Oh, yeah. So when the residents come over here to work, what do they do? Are yeah, they feeding, feeding cleaning mm -hmm. the pigs? And okay. they learn how to slaughter. Ah. Uh, we teach them. Well, that's so an important it's part simple. of it. It's simple for the consumptions of the residents. Is that, did that pig just drink out of a, like a faucet? Yeah, it's a drinker. Ah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Nepo drinker. Okay. <laughs> it's like water just came out of that concrete. <laughs> Oh my goodness, look at how big these... All of them is pregnant. Okay. Within a month, we'll have new babies. How many babies will they have? Two, uh, three? Ten? Ten? Yeah, minimum of ten. Wow, okay. And you have the, uh, the boys who are camping out here? Yeah? Oh, yeah, brother. <laughs> Every time they have uh, no, the pig's paro, the boys will know. Uh, uh, camping here, watching mm -hmm. that. Okay, making sure they're they're safe, safe, uh, and nothing <laughs> happens. Yeah, they're just laying down and yeah. trying to stay cool. <laughs> nice. I'm assuming everybody has uh, eat log for breakfast. Yeah, we have. There's food it, for breakfast every every day. We have eggs. Yeah, Sir. I have egg and spam for breakfast every yeah. morning. Every morning. <laughs> every morning. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, look at this wood you have here. Uh, it came from a uh, university. Uh huh. Oh, yeah. Will you use it for a project in the future? For firewood, for cooking. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For the dirty kitchen. Yes. Okay. This used to be where we we're keeping some animals, but there's a uh, typhoon. Uh, Odette? Odette. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I was in Sapalai when. Oh, I got stuck in Sapalai for three days and I, I I was with a group of people that didn't know how to use a chainsaw, Brother Dan. And I had to, being from Wisconsin, I grew up cutting wood and had to show them how to keep the chainsaw going. And <laughs> well, we were lucky that was good. It wasn't bad here in Bacolo. No, Sapalai was a wipeout. Oh, yes. That was devastating. Yeah. We stayed at Easy Diving and I think we must have had at least 50 coconut trees fall oh. <laughs> on, the, on, on the driveway. Yeah. I spent two days helping cut them up so we could leave. Oh. <laughs> How long do you stay here in the Philippines? I have my special resident retirement visa, so I, I plan on living here for... Oh, yeah, good. Yeah, I'm living here, bro. So, <laughs> retired and just trying to stay busy. And I don't want to be too busy, but I... You know, when you retire, you know that you have to find something to do that's meaningful in your life. That's right. <laughs> you don't want to just fade away. That's... You don't want to be just waiting in, you know, yeah. heaven's waiting room, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so. Exactly. Well, that's about, you know, other than crops going here and there. That's... Yeah, that's the tour. Right now, yeah. Thank you very much. Oh, well, thank you for it coming was, by. It was... Yeah, it was so nice uh -huh. and glad to learn about it. If there's any people out there that want to donate or volunteer their time, okay. would you? <laughs> Is it on Facebook? It. Yeah, Facebook. On Facebook. Yeah. Okay, so we'll put that up on, on the actual film and we'll put it in a link below oh, yeah. in yeah. the description so that people can reach out to you yeah. and continue yeah. the good work that you guys are, are doing right now. Oh, thank you. We appreciate it. Yeah, my pleasure. I hope you enjoyed the tour of Baha'i Lagasa and uh, the amazing staff there. Just want to say thank you for your friendliness. I'll continue to volunteer and I hope that if you like this organization, if you would 
support it, I've got the link in the description. This is David, your traveling tutor. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the very next video. Thank you.